everybody, Mark Spector Comics, and I'm back. This time, I got two early Bronze Age books. One of them's a Mark Jewelers, one of them's a regular. If you want to find out what a Mark's Jewelers is, stay tuned for that intro. So welcome back. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so that when I do put out some content, you'll get it in a timely fashion. Like I said, I got two early Bronze Age books. This is, uh, if you're not familiar with this book, this is Tomb of Dracula, issue number 20. This is the first appearance of Dr. Sun. So, uh, went to an LCS not too long ago, and I was hunting for some uh, Tomb of Dracula keys. And I found out that this issue actually has a Mark Jewelers variant. So um, I ended up picking one up at the LCS for $12, and then I went on my comic shop, and I noticed that they had the same issue in a Mark Jewelers. So ended up picking that one up as well. That one ended up uh, costing me $30. Um, by the naked eye, you just see that these are, you know, just an early Bronze Age book. There's no new stand barcode, which I believe um, started in... I think it was 76. Um, this book came out in 1974. So um, if you're not familiar with Mark Jewelers, I'm going to give you a quick, um, just a quick breakdown of what a Mark's Jewelers insert is and kind of the uh, history behind it. So um, you'll often hear these as Mark Jewelers inserts or Mark Jeweler variant comics. These were basically uh, special variant comics that, you know, had exactly what the name stated inside. It was an insert for from the company Mark Jewelers that was distributed from uh, this company in Los Angeles. I forget the uh, specific location, but um, it was basically just to advertise for jewelry. So uh, they were typically about four-page inserts, uh, up to four-page inserts. And they were sold near United States military establishments in the U.S. and overseas. So you, there is a chance you can get an overseas Mark Strulers, with, which would be very uh, pretty cool story. But um, the intent was uh, to assist soldiers to buy jewelry for their significant, you know, other while back home. So um, these would include rings, watches, necklaces, and just like any piece of jewelry you can think of. Um, so these started around 1972 and they ran up until I want to say 1991 and that's when I believe either 91 or 92 is when the, the company went out of business. So um, by looking at these I don't know if you can see but um, there is a little bit of a little darkness in the middle of the comic versus the other one that just looks like a regular comic book. So these would be a quick way to identify if you have an, a Mark Jewelers variant. Um, generally, with a Mark Jewelers variant, you, you can, if you're just handling the book raw without a you know a bag and board, you can feel it. It's a little bit slightly wider. It feels a little bit stockier and slightly heavier than the regular issue that does not have the insert in there. Um, these are, you know, quite hard to find out in the wild. Um, normally, if you're out hunting, if there's like an LCS or an antique shop, not too far from a military establishment, those are probably going to be your best bet when it comes to finding them in the wild. Otherwise. You can sometimes luck out and find them online at an auction and, you know, the seller may not even know that they have one in there. They just sell it without checking the inside of the comic, which is a bad, bad rule for a seller not to check your, the entirety of the comic book. So uh, look out for those as well. Um, last thing I want to tell you about Mark Jula variants, they tend to be significantly higher in value than the regular cover because they typically were about, I don't know, maybe 8% or less, depending on the issue of the total distribution. 
Um, so obviously there's going to be collectors out there that you know seek these uh, Marks Jewelers variants versus the uh, the regular. Um, some of the bigger key books I wanted to mention that have Mark Jewelers inserts. I'll just name off some common you know some common keys that you you're pretty familiar with. So you got Incredible Hulk number three forty. That came in uh, Mark Jewelers, and these Mark Jewelers, after um, nineteen from nineteen seventy six on, that have the new stand barcode. They only came in newsstands because they were distributed to, like I said, the military establishments. If you see a book that's direct, those are guaranteed to not have Mark Jeweler variants in there. So, um, Special Marvel Edition number fifteen, the first appearance of Shang Chi. That won't have a new stand barcode because it came out in 73, but that has a Mark Jeweler variant in there. Um, going towards the later part, this is in 1990, New Mutants 87, first appearance of Cable. You also got Uncanny X-Men 266, uh, first, um, or however you want to call it, first cover appearance of Gambit, second appearance. Uh, there's also first appearance of Beta Ray Bill, Thor 337. Amazing Spider-Man 129, first appearance of uh, Punisher. Uh, there's also Hulk 181, that ha and a Hulk 180 that also has uh, Mark Jula variants. New Mutants 98, first appearance of Deadpool, and of course Werewolf by Night 32. So those are just a few keys I named right off the bat. There's also some DC uh, keys to look out for as well. Batman 251, the classic Neil Adams cover. That's also um, a Mark Jeweler variant. GI Combat 155. It's one of the earlier ones. This came out in September of 72. That's a war cover. That also has a Mark Jeweler variant. So those are just a, a few to name right off the bat. Um, I wanted to show you my two copies here. I ended up, like I said, one I bought at an LCS, one I bought on my comic shop. And I will show you the two books and uh, just basically what they look like up close. And then I want to unbox a quick book as well, Tomb of Dracula, number 20, that I just purchased off of eBay. And uh, I took a little gamble to see if there's one in there. So, uh, like I said, this was the direct, uh, well, not the direct, but the uh, non-Mark Jeweler variant. You know, it feels like a regular comic book, right? This is the Mark Jewelers. You can tell just by grabbing it, it's a little bit stockier. You can see that little, tiny little lip in there, that little insert, and that should be a, a quick, there you go, uh, cue that it's a Mark Jewelers variant. And uh, when I open it, it uh, goes right to that center fold. So uh, there you go some of the advertisements that they had. You got some uh, rings there. This is actually a four page spread. Looks like some school rings there. And you can see there it actually has the uh, address for uh, Los Angeles, California. That's where the company is. The company's no longer there. It got burnt down after, uh, I think it was a drug raid back in the 91 or 92. And then there's the last page. So this one was all uh, all rings. But uh, like I said, you'll get a little bit of everything depending on the insert. You can get some necklaces, some bracelets, a little bit of everything. And then, uh, so that was my Mark Jewelers variant, like I said. And then I have an unboxing as well. I uh, purchased Another Tomb of Dracula 20. Um, I figured I'd take a shot. The uh, listing only had two pictures on it. <coughs> so, and I got it for, I think it was 15, 15 bucks total. That was including shipping. So, for an early Tomb of Dracula, you know, key appearance for 15 bucks with shipping included, I figured why not, you know? And worst case, it's just an extra one for the, the, the PC. This is a book I've been, you know, long-term specking on for um, the upcoming Blade film. So, uh, 
this character is pretty interesting. But uh, if it obviously if it doesn't pan out, worst case is I got a cool early Bronze Age book, especially a uh, Bronze Age horror, which is right up my alley, of course. So uh, here's the book. This is actually packaged up really nice. There we go. This is a proper way to package a single book. And he put some uh, extra protection inside, which is always nice. I, I appreciate appreciate stuff like that, and I'll give him a nice comment in the review. Like I said, I'm not expecting it to be a Mark Jewelers variant, but in the small off chance that it is, It'll be a great pickup because <laughs> these do not come up often. And I've only once previously uh, had a Mark Jewelers variant, and I actually gave it to my buddy uh, Rayman as an AOK. -okay, so that, <laughs> that was pretty cool. Uh, so, uh, like I said, these are always hard to find. And uh, if you like this content, if you found it, you know, interesting, feel free to hit the thumbs up. Because I like doing stuff like this. Alright. So, uh, looking at this quickly, I don't believe it is. It does have that little indentation there that I saw on my other one, but I don't believe this is one as well. But, uh... Like I said, I forget the condition that they said it was, but this looks like in really nice condition. Might be better than the uh, other tubes I actually have here. So, so here it is, Tomb of Dracula number 20. Has some pressable defects in here, which is always nice. Like I said, I paid 15 bucks for it shipped. And uh, no Mark Jewelers variant. But, uh, oh, what he didn't say in here was that the uh, Marvel value stamp, he did, I don't remember him saying that the Marvel value stamp was missing. So, um, which is fine, no big deal. I'm not going to complain about that. But um, there is a Marvel value stamp in this issue, and uh, the Marvel value stamp is, I believe, the leader. See if I can find that real quick. Just want to show that off before I forget. Yep, there it is. So a Marvel value stamp number 88. The leader. Really cool villain. Um, I'll just mention that to him in the comments. I'm not going to really care about it, but that's something they just, you know, look after as well with some of these books in the Bronze Age to make sure that these uh, Marvel value stamps are in there. So, uh, like I said, Mark Jewelers variants, really cool, uh, highly sought after. If uh, you like this, please feel free to hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and until next time, Mark's with the comics.